Hero Coffee. So if anyone can, if everyone can see the, uh, your screens, here's the agenda. I'm just kicking it off very quickly before passing it over to Matt Matros, and then we'll have a, uh, a lot of time allocated to a question and answer uh, session where you can ask all your questions, whether it's uh, you know, related to Matt, uh, Hero Coffee, or the Visa Franchise uh, Services. So a quick background on Visa Franchise. Uh, our firm is, is headquartered in Miami, Florida, though we have offices around the world. Uh, what we do is we work with foreign nationals uh, that are interested in moving to the U.S. Uh, through investment, uh, particularly franchise investments. Our clients come from all over the world, uh, at this point uh, over 30 countries. Uh, and we, our, our background at our firm is uh, a lot of finance background as well as a, a lot of background in the franchising world. With myself in particular, uh, I used to be at Restaurant Brands International, which is the owner of Burger King, Tim Hortons, and, and now Popeyes. And while there, I was working in uh, investor relations, global finance, and global development. So the whole focus of our firm is to, uh, find, the, to, to find and analyze the best franchise investments on behalf of our clients. And what we do is we uh, understand our client's profile. By profile, I mean how much they want to invest, where they want to live, um, how, how involved they want to be. Some want to be very active and be there day to day. Others want to be a little less active and they want to hire a manager and, and not necessarily be there day to day. Uh, we make sure that the business with, that they want to invest in is available where they want to live. That's a good fit. Um, and so we take all these, fact, these factors into consideration before presenting them the best franchise investments. And we work with our clients from the time that they uh, begin this search up until they uh, decide to do their investment and they apply for their investor visa. And visa franchise is there throughout the whole process. Uh, we speak five different languages at our firm and we work with many immigration attorneys that speak uh, even more uh, languages than that. So here's our contact information. Uh, but at this point, I wanted to uh, give the floor to Matt Matros. I'm very excited to, to uh, be hosting him today. Uh, Hero Coffee is an uh, exciting brand out of Chicago, uh, Illinois. That's growing. And, and Matt, I'll let you uh, take it from there. Cool. Thank you, Jack. I've been instructed to speak slowly which is going to be very hard for me because I speak fast and say a lot of words, but I'm going to try my best. Um, what I thought I would do in these next couple minutes is tell you a little bit about my background, then share with you um, a little bit about why coffee makes a great franchise, talk to you specifically about Hero Coffee here in Chicago. As you can see, I'm drinking my coffee cup um, from Hero. And then really turn it over to you guys to see what sort of questions that you uh, may have about the process. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California. I moved to Chicago in 2005 to work for Kraft Foods. So I was a brand manager in a large organization. Um, did a ton. Um, about three years into my career at Kraft, I left and started a business of my own. I started a chain of restaurants called Protein Bar. We now have about 20 locations across Chicago, Washington, D.C., um, and Denver, Boulder that are all company-owned um, stores. Um, I sold the majority of that business to a large private equity firm called Catterton Partners back in 2013. Um, stayed on and ran the business for a while um, and then took some time off. Um, I've gotten into the coffee business in early 2016. We provide coffee to about 500 offices across the country. We're in Netflix, Twitter, WeWork, the Chicago Cubs, Facebook, Pinterest, Salesforce, um, a number of other corporations um, in Chicago and then beyond that we provide coffee to. Uh, we also operate coffee shops. So right now we have six Hero coffee shops that are open in Chicago. Um, we've been in operation for several years. 
and they are in a variety of neighborhoods and locations around Chicago. Coffee makes for a particularly good franchise opportunity for a variety of reasons. Um, first and foremost, in America, pretty much everybody drinks coffee. Um, coffee is an 80% consumption product, which means 80% of Americans drink it on a monthly basis. Um, so that's an, an incredibly powerful fact by contrasted to salads or ice cream or some other um, food service operation. Coffee has broad appeal. Um, that's reason number one that why it's a good franchise opportunity. Reason number two is because coffee is a convenience-based business in America at least. Um, this is why you have Starbucks on every street corner because oftentimes people don't want to cross to the other side of the street just to go to Starbucks. They want to get it while it's on their walk. So the number of outlets um, selling coffee in America is plentiful. Um, reason number three why coffee is a good franchise opportunity is because you can scale coffee as small as a basically a kiosk or a stand all the way up to a massive cafe, restaurant, and roastery, of which we have both ends of the spectrum. We have big cafes and roasteries on one end of the spectrum that are doing very high volume, but involve lots of people, operations, and support. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have coffee kiosks or stands, which in many instances can operate with just one or two people throughout the course of the afternoon or morning. So that's reason number three. Um, reason number four why coffee makes a good franchise opportunity is because there's a varying range of investments. Um, because we have different sizes, you could invest as little as, say, thirty to $50,000 just in the build-out of your kiosk, all the way up to you know, half a million dollars to three-quarters of a million dollars to get a full restaurant, cafe, and roastery going. Now, all of these costs that I'm quoting you are just for the development and the build out of the sites themselves and don't include any of the um, sort of visa related costs that um, Jack and Patrick are going to lead you guys through. Um, so those are all the reasons why coffee makes for a great franchise. Um, in terms of some of the questions that we've had from franchisees overseas that I think the number one thing that I need to instill in a lot of foreign franchisees is that in America, the development process for a physical retail space can take longer than what you're used to. And this isn't just for coffee, this would be for any retail-based business. Here's what I mean. Let's assume that on July 1st, you came to America and you found a site that you absolutely loved. Well, it's going to be about three to six weeks just of negotiating the initial terms. They call that the LOI, which stands for Letter of Intent. Once you've agreed upon the Letter of Intent, you then switch to lease negotiations. Now, the lease is just based on all of the Letter of Intent facts, but because lawyers are involved, particularly American lawyers, it can be very time consuming. So that process could stretch another two to six weeks. So now you have six weeks on top of six weeks, so that's about 12 weeks at its max, even before you've even been given the keys to the space. Then once you get the keys to the space, it will take you some amount of time to fit out or build the space to your specifications, and that can be anywhere from two to 12 weeks. So I do want to set the expectation that it can be a while before you're actually in business. And again, this isn't just for Hero Coffee or for any other coffee bar. This would be for all retail-based um, food service operations. Now, does this mean that you won't be able to be here either on a tourist visa or maybe even as part of your E2 visa? I can't answer that. Jack can um, more specifically. Um, but I would just say that whatever business you go into, whether it's Hero Coffee or another one that's retail based, just have that expectation that the second you land in America, you are not going to be making coffee. It's going to take you some amount of time to get the ideal site going um, from a legal, from a negotiation, and then from a build out perspective. So just want to set those expectations clear. Now let's transition to when you are in operation. Um, as I mentioned, coffee is great because you can have it be operated by as few as one or two people, 
all the way up to many people, which would be an entire cafe or, or restaurant or shop. And this decision is driven based on you and what you want for yourself. I've talked to many franchisees that want to be exclusively hands-off, which is another reason why coffee is a great franchise opportunity because it's a, it's a relatively simple operation. So you can have very few amount of people that are actually operating um, the shop or the site. And you can sit back as the owner or the franchisee and, and just check in on an as needed basis. On the opposite end of the spectrum, um, you can be as hands on as you'd like to be. Some of the most successful franchisees, no surprise, are going to be the ones that are as hands on as possible. Um, this is a twofold reason. One, just because they're close to the business so they can see what's going on and what's happening. And number two, this is because instead of paying someone else a salary or a wage, they're going to be paying themselves that salary or wage. So all of that cash is going to be staying in their pockets. Now, one of the downsides of coffee as a franchise opportunity is that it's relatively low volume. This cup of coffee that we'll sell several hundred of today only costs anywhere from $250 to $5. So you have to do lots of these transactions to get lots of sales. This is not a sandwich place or a pizza place where your average transaction is anywhere from $12 to $15. In the world of coffee, your average transaction is anywhere from $5.50 to $7. So you need to do lots of transactions. So that just means you need to be in a high traffic um, location, which sort of goes without saying. Um, I'm going to take a second and pause because if I don't, I could talk forever. Um, I'm going to take a second and pause and see if anyone on the webinar or anyone else um, related to this call might have any questions before I continue. Yeah, thank you for that, Matt. And I should mention to uh, everyone who's who's uh, here and listening and, and watching, uh, you can send questions via the chat box or to info at visafranchise.com. Either one works. Um, we, we can stop throughout this, this webinar and, and go over the questions or, or associate, you know, as it pertained to, to Hero and, and Matt. Um, and then any uh, other questions, uh, please, uh, please feel free to, to, to send them in and we can go over them at the end of the, of the presentation. And either myself or Matt will answer them depending on the nature of the question. So, so please feel free to reach out. Why don't I start with a question that we get frequently and that is, what about Good. geography? So in the world of coffee, the good news is, is as I mentioned, is, is it's a widely consumed product. So the geography for which you could locate your franchise is literally unlimited. Um, I think the best way to think about the geography would be think first and foremost about where you want to be long term. If you want to be in Boca Raton, Florida, we will find you places in Boca Raton, Florida. If you want to be in Los Angeles, California, we can find you places in Los Angeles, California. If you want to be in Chicago, New York, San Francisco, um, I think the geography should be driven first and foremost about where you want to be. Coffee is consumed in the same amount regardless of the location. And, and a question to that, Matt, I think you, you're you alluding to it, but uh, obviously Heroes has had a ton of success, has won a lot of accolades in the Chicago market. As most people know, Chicago has uh, three months of warm weather, summer, and then the rest is it's, it gets, can get pretty cold. Uh, does temperature have a big impact on uh, coffee sales? Actually, you know what we've found, be because of the popularity of cold brew coffee in America, which has been made popular recently um, as a result of Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks, we actually like the colder, or I'm sorry, the warmer weather months because Cold beverages, so iced coffees and the like, are actually easier to serve. Um, they're faster from a throughput perspective, and we make more money. So for each of those three reasons, we actually like the hot months better because we can serve more cold drinks. So um, by cold drinks, again, I mean iced coffees, um, blended drinks, um, or any iced lattes. They don't involve using the espresso machine so you can get them out much faster. Okay, no, that makes sense. Thanks for explaining that. Okay, so maybe a good transition will be talking about the economics of coffee shops. Now, 
in our operation hero, we have three different types of operations. On the small end of things, we have just that traditional kiosk, or we call it a coffee bar, which operates similar to what you would maybe see at an airport or in a hospital or any other high volume um, location where it's pretty much just a stand or a booth. We call those coffee bars. Those locations can do anywhere from two to roughly $500,000 in annual sales. Now, while that number may seem low, just remember it's a relatively small footprint, so your rent is lower. And because it's a small footprint, you can operate um, with less folks, less people. So in our business, your two cost drivers are your labor and your rent. Well, in the coffee bar example, that's the smallest it's going to get. So that's a highly controllable store. We actually like having lots of those little stores because they just crank and they're highly efficient. Our most successful store actually operates on 350 square feet. Um, so we love these tiny, efficient, um, smaller spaces that just crank people out. Coffee is an on-the-go business. There's very... Well, I don't want to say there's very little people that stay because that's certainly not true, but um, people tend to get their coffee and then go on with the rest of their day. So it makes the kiosk business all the more popular for us. In the middle, we have what we sort of call the brunch bar. Um, this would be your traditional neighborhood coffee shop that has a good amount of food. Um, the food is very simple. It's mostly bagel sandwiches. Um, and of course, we're going to teach you how to do everything, and we're going to help you pro pro help you find suppliers in your local town for everything. Um, those stores do anywhere from three hundred thousand up to maybe around nine hundred thousand, depending on just the all-day nature of the business. As you can imagine, in coffee, pretty much every coffee shop is busy between seven thirty in the morning and ten in the morning. But what will make your coffee shop all the more successful would be is if you could locate in a neighborhood that has lots of all-day traffic either from students who tend to sit there or come um, to study or from the work environment so business professionals who will come in the mid-afternoon when they're looking for a break from their day so that's the brunch bar on the top end of the spectrum we have a full serve cafe and roastery so this is actually a facility that is roasting beans i wouldn't recommend this location um, for a first-time franchisee, unless you have lots of restaurant experience, mostly just because it's a heavy operated um, location. Largely seven days a week, lots of people, big footprint, um, lots of equipment to roast the machine, or to roast the coffee, and it's a heavier investment. So these investments are gonna be anywhere from 250 all the way up to, as I mentioned before, about three quarters of a million dollars. That being said, being a bigger location that's doing more volume, you have the ability to do greater sales. So anywhere from half a million all the way to one and a half million dollars in sales. Um, but I would save this for someone who has full food and beverage experience. Um, going back to the investments, I didn't touch upon those. Um, your coffee bar on the small end of things could be anywhere from sort of 30000 all the way up to a couple hundred thousand dollars. And again, this investment is only for the coffee build out and the equipment. It does not include any um, visa or franchise related costs. Uh, the brunch bar in the middle, an investment would be anywhere from one hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. And then the cafe roastery, as I mentioned before, is going to be anywhere from two fifty to to about three quarters of a million dollars. Now, obviously, the larger the investment, presumably the larger the amount of sales, which presumably you would get larger return on your investment. Um, but as you come closer to deciding which one you want, I can help you run through those numbers. Um, I would say from a decision standpoint perspective, the decision tree should follow this. First, it should be where you want to be. Just geographically, where do you want to live? Um, and let's just use Boca Raton as an example. I made that up. Maybe it's just because I was invited to a wedding there next week. Um, so we'll go to Boca Raton. Part of the services that we at Hero provide is real estate. Um, you don't pay a broker anything. Um, the broker gets paid once the deal is signed by the landlord. Um, so I'll help you manage and find brokers in the local hometown, in this instance, Boca Raton, Florida. 
We'll then spend some time searching for sites. Now, presumably you guys aren't in the United States, so I can do a lot of that for you while you are working remotely. Ultimately though, I don't think I would feel comfortable um, having you guys sign a lease until you actually physically came to see the space. Um, so that would involve at least one trip to America to the site. But again, we can get everything all teed up so that when you come to America, you're looking at several sites in an afternoon and then we can decide the one that fits you from there. Um, and that's really, that's really the plan. So I think the decision criterion goes, where do you want to be first? Um, then finding a site that fits with your operating criteria, whether you want to be a full hands-on operator or whether you want to be more of a passive, hand, uh, passive operator. And then we would look at sites that fit for those, um, those two decisions. I'm stopping. Questions? Hi, Matt. We received uh, one question so far. I'll read it out to you. It's, how does the hiring process work? Is it, is it hard to find qualified employees? One piece of good news within the coffee world is that the coffee shop environment in America has a heavy tipping culture or heavy gratuity culture. Um, so you tend to um, attract better talent because coffee shop employees tend to get paid a little bit more than your average fast food worker. So Protein Bar, which was my previous business, which was basically a chain of healthy fast food restaurants, our employees only received their wage. But in Hero Coffee, they get their wage plus a lot of tips. And it can work out to several dollars per hour per employee. So if in America, minimum wage is dependent upon where you're located. In Chicago, minimum wage is around $11. But between the minimum wage of $11 and then that, that roughly three or so dollars that our employees get on an hourly basis in tips, they can make $14 to $16 an hour. And in our industry, that's really good. So as a result of that, it's easier to attract really good, talented people. Most of our employees tend to be students, so people who have flexible work days. Uh, but they also know their schedules, oftentimes months in advance because of their school schedules. Um, hiring of employees will be the thing that you do really last. Um, that's the closest thing you're going to do to getting open for business uh, will be hiring an employee. Because in America, you can interview someone and have them start the next day. So it doesn't make sense to start the sourcing of employees until you're right close to opening. And then from a training and hiring perspective, we have things that we can help you with um, to help you hire, attract, and retain talent. Perfect. Thanks, Thanks for going over that, Matt. Uh, we received another question. Um, again, it's, it's directed towards you. Uh, it's regarding it's the coffee and, and the machines. It says, uh, how does the sourcing for the coffee uh, and machines work? Mm -hmm. So we as yeah, so we as the franchisor are going to be able to provide you everything that you're going to need to be completely turnkey. Um, unless you decide to build your own roastery, which again I wouldn't recommend unless you're a really seasoned restaurant operator, we as the franchisor will provide you with the coffee. Um, as part of the franchise agreement, we sell you coffee at market rates, so you can rest assured that you're going to be getting coffee for a fair price. That being said, we're one of the largest purchasers of coffee in the Midwest, so we have the ability to source pretty much anything that you could ever want. If there's a particular bean from a particular part of the world, like for example, most of our beans right now come from Central and South America, specifically Colombia, Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. But if you're a franchisee from Peru and you'd really like to feature Peruvian beans, I'm happy to source those beans for you and roast them and you can sell them within your shop. Oh, so once you get open, some of the things that we are going to provide you as the franchisor is all of the products that you're going to need um, from a coffee and supplies perspective, um, basically just the beans. We are then going to put you in touch with local food service distributors in whatever market you're in to help you get all of those other things that you'll need. 
such as cups and sugar and stirs and straws. Um, and then on the, the fresh produce and milk perspective, after coffee beans, the largest expense that you will have as an operator is milk, just because most coffee drinks include some amount of milk. So I will help you find um, local dairies or food service operators that can help bring you milk on a daily basis. We received another question for... Okay. Uh, do you only do retail stores or do you offer corporate locations? Um, I'm not certain what, I, what the question means around corporate locations. We, maybe he means selling coffee into a company. As you build your brand in your local environment, one other additional revenue stream will be selling your beans wholesale. So using the Boca Raton example, as consumers start coming into your shop and start loving the Hero brand, many of them are going to say, wow, I love Hero coffee. Can I sell this in my office or can I sell this in my restaurant? And the short answer is absolutely. And we will sell you beans, which you then in turn can sell into wholesale accounts such as offices and restaurants. I hope that answered the question. Perfect. Yeah, no, I think that's what it was. Um, and then if I can jump in, we had a question for, for us at Visa Franchise uh, regarding how long does the Visa Best work? Uh, I would say this, it's, it's pretty much a range. We've seen people invest in as little as two weeks um, and we've seen people take as, as long as like a year. Uh, it really depends on the individual and, and how fast they want to move and how comfortable they are and the investment that they want to do. Um, some people are, are able to move fast. Maybe they're already living in the U.S. They, they, we help them find the business. And maybe it's an existing business and they can, they can do the transaction investment quickly and apply for the visa. Other people like to take their time and, and uh, maybe they need to sell some sell their home uh, back in their home country or uh, you know, it takes a little time for them to leave because the kids are still in school and they don't want to leave during the middle of the school year. Uh, so they decide to delay. But from what we've seen, I would say a good, a good average is anywhere from three to four months. Uh, from that time, uh, you know, at the Visa franchise side, we, we, we would help you, uh, you know, find the right franchise. Just take Hero for example. Uh, present present Hero, see if it matches up with, with your criteria and your profile. And then from there, what would happen is uh, you as the investor or potential franchisee would be speaking directly with Matt Matros and he would take you through the whole process, um, which is usually a discovery call followed up by a more in-depth call about the business and uh, eventually leading to a meeting uh, very likely in Chicago so you can see the different Hero stores, the different concepts and, and meet the team there taste, and taste the product. Um, at that point, uh, you as the investor or franchisee would be uh, offered and shown the, the, the franchise disclosure document and the franchise agreement. And uh, once that's signed and, and settled, then uh, the individual would then apply for the investor visa. It takes anywhere from two to eight weeks. So that's why I would say the three to four month time, timeline is a good, good time frame to have in mind. And Matt, do, do you have any other questions on your end that you that you feel uh, you've been asked in the past um, that might be relevant? In terms um, of we maybe are, the type of product that, that you offer in in the stores, what? Um, what's yeah. So, yeah. yep. If anybody's ever been to a Starbucks, um, either in America or abroad, you can imagine that's the same range of products that we saw at Hero Coffee Bar. Traditional espresso-based drinks. So espresso-based drinks are all drinks that are made using an espresso machine, as you can imagine. So that's a shot of espresso. That's a latte. That's a cappuccino. That's a cortado. That's a macchiato. Um, and then on the drip side of things, we have drip coffee, which is what I'm drinking right now. Uh, on the cold beverage side of things, as I mentioned, cold beverage is incredibly popular nowadays. Um, that's typically cold brew and then some iced teas, which we serve on tap, which is pretty exciting and fast. So you can have your barista scoop ice, pull a tap, and get the customer out in a very fast method. 
from a food perspective, um, this largely depends on your footprint. At its most basic, you have just pastries, which we will help you source from a local bakery, um, all the way up to pastries, bagel sandwiches, and then other traditional lunch sandwiches. Um, your menu will largely be driven by your footprint and then also your customer base within the surrounding area. For example, if you tend to locate near a hospital, for example, which is a 24 hour, seven day a week operation, you may want to have food just because there's very few offerings um, typically around those. Um, if you tend to be located near a college campus where lots of students will come and spend their time, you may want to also have additional food options for them. Thank you for that, Matt. Uh, we received another question. Uh, this one is it's more of a, it's a visa related question. Um, it says, would, would a Hero Coffee uh, investment be applicable for EB-5 investor visa? Uh, I would say it wouldn't be um, ideal for an, for an EB-5 investment uh, due to the, the full-time job requirement, which is uh, 10 plus full-time American jobs and half a million dollar investment. Hero Coffee can be significantly less than that, particularly if someone's not doing the, uh, the, the full uh, roastery concept. They do the regular you know, cafe um, brunch, brunch bar concept. Uh, I'd say it's, it's very applicable for the E2. It fits E2 very well. It creates a few American jobs, uh, very easy for someone to manage or even hire a manager if they really want to. Um, and it's in the investment range where, where most of our clients are, are investing in, which is anywhere from $150,000 to, to $300,000. That's what you've seen as, as typical for our, our, our clients. Obviously, some people will do less, and other people will, will do more. But we've seen in that, within that range is, is where uh, most of our clients are focused. And then, okay, got another question about, uh, this one's for Matt now. Uh, someone's asking about, uh, I guess they, they must have looked online, they saw uh, the Protein Bar. Um, are you still involved in Protein Bar or does Protein Bar franchise? Um, great question. I am still involved in Protein Bar. I'm on the board. I'm the second largest shareholder. Um, Protein Bar currently is not exploring franchise opportunities um, for no reason other than they just haven't focused on it. Um, they've been focusing on building company-owned stores. Yeah. Makes sense there. Um, another question for Hero. Is Hero plan on opening uh, more corporate locations in Chicago, or are they going to do corporate locations outside of Chicago? Yep. So right now we have six locations in operation. We have another one that we are finishing construction on this week. And then we have a, another one that we're starting construction next week. So that will be eight locations all in and around the Chicago environment. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, we have not considered any geography outside of Chicago for the sole reason other than our infrastructure and our people are here. So for us to open outside of the geography um, just doesn't make sense for us from an from a operational perspective. Uh, that being said, we do have people in support um, who can help you get shops open. We have customers that we sell coffee to on a wholesale basis that are all over the country. In fact, we're doing an install at a major restaurant in Tampa, Florida in two weeks. So that, or that involves us sending our corporate trainer down to the location, sending equipment right to the location, and then helping support them on an as-needed basis. We also have service techs that are all over the country. Um, so if there's a challenge with the equipment and you may need something repaired, we can have someone out within a few hours. Awesome. Uh, we'll, we'll, looks like we don't have any more questions at this time. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide our contact information. So feel free to reach out to directly to myself or Visa Franchise. And then we'll, we'll also provide Matt's contact information. You can reach out to him directly, uh, you know, learn more about the, the Hero Coffee. I'm sure many of you have questions uh, that you might wanna work, uh, ask in person or ask over the phone directly uh, to one of us. Um, and with that, Matt, I wanna thank you so much for your, for your time today. Uh, it, was, it was very informative um, and it was, uh, you know, 
I think it was very good for us to learn more about, about the concept. So thank you again. Cool. And as we say at Hero Coffee, make something happen today. So whether you choose to franchise with Hero or some other opportunity, um, I wish you guys the best of luck. Awesome. Very, very good phrase. I, I appreciate that. And I agree. So, well, Matt, thank you again. And thank you all for, for joining uh, the webinar today. Thank you.